Welcome back to the Paladins Minor League. We're in NA now, and we're jumping right on board with your first seed against the last seed team. Hype Unit versus Five Stack. Hype Unit at 10 and 1. Dominant throughout this split. They qualified a couple of weeks ago to the qualifier tournament. And today, Kresnik, I, I think you just look at them to bring out a dominant performance. This is yeah. a game where, you know, if they're really going to be making strides in a couple of weeks in, in that qualifier tournament, you expect convincing big wins from them today. Well, here's the thing. Are they still picking maps? That, that's random fair. Random number generator. That is fair. I think that's entirely fair. I don't know. Although they've only ever been able to pick one. <laughs> because they, they, they always they, just win They're bands, though, I guess. I guess their yeah, bands the bands count. Random. But yes. you're right. They always win or tend to win 3-0 in, in most of their matches. So, like, yeah, you get the, the RNG for, for map one or two, depending on what order they're picking. And then usually the enemy team gets one pick. pick. yeah. And then it's game over after that. But digressing back, I mean, hype unit over five stack, ten and one versus two and nine at this point. Yeah, uh, you'll see that reflected here standings wise. Dominant split over the other couple of teams in this region, not unlike what we saw out of all business in Europe. Uh, but again, th I think this is a, a winnable one and one that you would expect them to really put their mark on and, and finish off their split with maybe a three zero. For sure, I think that's what they're looking to do and. I mean, looking at looking at the standings, I think they've they've definitely been shaken. I mean, they we have, saw early right. in the season there was constant three twos. Mm -hmm. we, we always joked that Hype Unit just can't close a set. Right. They just kept dropping all those maps over time, and I think that's why their map differential is so low. But right. they definitely found their stride. They find what clicked for them over time. Although I still think some of these teams are, are growing quite a bit. Five Stack right. and Exile specifically. I mean, Exile took that set off of Sanguine, and Five Stack and Exile then immediately had a close set after that. Right. So all these teams at the bottom are closer. How much have they grown? Have they grown enough to contest Hype Unit? Yeah, it's a good question to answer. And then you look at map differential. We've played 11 games. There's a potential, if you 3-0 everyone, that you would be at a 33 uh, plus minus. And they're around 17. So, yeah, I mean, dropping map one, dropping map two, whatever it may be, yeah. they're looking for a clean 3-0 to round out their split. Map bands at the bottom of your screen, Bright Marsh and Ascension I'm Peak. i guess that that might be randomly generated. Splitstone, Quarry, and Ice Mines. Does that... Does that Lend bright and split. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know who bans bright unless you're explicitly focusing on something. I mean, a I confident see. team. A I very confident team. We'll see. We'll have to see. But confidence maybe is key here for, for yeah. hype unit. I think once everything was all locked up for them, that was maybe when the uh, the random dice roll map picks they're, and bans. They're uh, definitely the up. kind of team to do that. Of right. what I know of the people on that team. Hey, listen. I mean, that's that's maybe what it's going to take. I mean, you yeah. look at these two minor league teams in all business and hype unit. Very capable teams. You know, they're going to be going up against technically the 7th and 8th seed. This would be Hype Unit because of MSI performance of Penta. It's going to put e or NA Minor League against the 7th seed PPL team, whether that's Knights or Kanga. I, th I think at the moment it's Kanga. Yeah. That's a tough matchup, but these guys are probably feeling confident. If I know anything about the players on Hype Unit, confidence is definitely a word that you could use to describe them. And one thing that they have over other PML teams is they've played. Yeah. Against Kanga. I right. mean, this is, this is the Throner and Pain on this team. They've played multiple matches against Kanga. They've probably scrimmed hours and hours against them. So it's not like they're going in completely blind right. about what they're potentially going to do. We'll have to see how they adapt once they are in that land. By the way, me saying that they're the kind of team that would kind of take things a little less seriously once they've officially qualified, right. that's not necessarily a bad thing. No. Because it being like having that levity in your team comps, you it. being. Right. Not being super, super serious all the time. If you're like that, when things start going wrong, it snowballs so much harder. Right. So much harder. So much harder to recover at that point. Hype Unit haven't really had to. Maybe that one loss to Sanguine was the, the closest they've had to struggles, really, in the second split of the minor league. It's been smooth sailing, save maybe a dropped map or two you're here and there, but, but wins galore for this Hype Unit roster. Maybe one final win for them here today. Map well, or. or Champion bands, rather, rolling on through here. The Evie and Ash, look to me. Strix and Genos, Protection. and they're going to get Atlas Makoa right off the bat. Yeah. Yeah, they are. Five Stack had a great performance Cassie, though, for what it's worth. Yeah, what it's worth. but <laughs> Makoa, Atlas. I know. That's horrifying. Yes, I think they're actually going to be weak to strong backlines. If if Five Stack bought, pick a second backline here, yeah. maybe maybe an e, uh, Mave, like a little more flexible, like hybrid flank backline, and they do. That is actually pretty good against the tanks on the other side, but there's no off-tank they could pick that would 
con maybe, but yeah. the pressure from everybody else. You you can't overpower a, an ancient raging Makoa with Leviathan. You can't. The counter is just gone if that's on the I table. Will bring an end yeah, and, to and you know between Amadeus and, and Tuga for five stack. Last week, you know they big games on the Cassie yes. kind of across the board. They they juggled the Cassie back and forth between the two of them. I will if fight that carries over into this game, you know, you, you still put your money on hype unit, but maybe makes things a little bit more interesting if you get the same kind of pop-off performance, especially with the potential that Cassie has into what hype unit are drafting in a triple front line. This is a pretty solid triple front line. It, it's like the dream. I mean, if anything, maybe they just take Khan instead and just yeah. go straight in with all of them. It could be the answer because they have strong a strong back line on five stack. They're, they're Again, they're first picking Cassie over everything. They think it's, it's that good, and their performance last week, I think, says that it, it could be. Let's see what they end with. I think and they it is picked Leon. Cassie first overall mm -hmm. yes. last week, too. I, yeah. I think and this I think is that's what Hype Unit's kind of abusing right, right now. They're probably they, they know that. They're leaning into it. Yes. All right, triple, uh, triple front line, triple DPS. It's hard to vote against Hype Unit. Cover up the names. Who are you feeling? Cover up the... You can't even just tier list wise. You can't argue <laughs> against Makoa. You got a lot of S. You got a lot of yeah. S plus tiers yeah. over for Hype Unit. Let's see if they can back up those tiers in game one. What's up, guys? I'm back. It's fun, but this time I'm joined by Gore. Gore's here with me to help talk about this game. Yeah, and I'm excited for it. I mean, it's not often that you get to see either Atlas or Makoa, let alone both of them, right. and let alone both of them on the same team. There's a lot of things lining up here for Hype Unit, and the interesting statistic would be that I'm I think I've seen these two champions lose together more than I've seen them win together but because they're kind of accompanying it alongside the Sonara I think it starts to balance out mm -hmm. yeah I agree with that I mean I'm just interested to see how it's going to fare like even later on in the game because I mean I'm actually curious what do you think about the ying to be able to try and cover these high mobility targets like willow and Maeve, and I mean, even with the illusion, she can heal, true, but I mean, with that right click, it's going to be a little bit harder for her, not? I think it's going to, well, oh, well obviously thought, okay. make it very well. hard. That's going to be why the hook <laughs> is good. If you were wondering about that one earlier, we were talking about why that could maybe be the uh, root of all evil for some console teams. But you also have to, to look at, specifically going back to, to Ying, the hit scan heal for her right click is going to be a lot more convenient for, you know, like the Willow, the Cassie, the Maeve. Like, you're bouncing around a lot. The Illusion should keep Barrett going. The problem is is that you're kind of splitting her vision. I think that's where they're maybe going to get cut thin. Ice Monkey has to stand on the point, so you have to look at the point, but you also have to look pretty much anywhere but the objective in order to keep the rest of your team going. Well, you already have 78% for Hype Unit to uh, five stacks, 21. No ultimates up or online yet. Well, there definitely is point control on Hype Unit's side. They're just going to fire around that corner pre-fire, trying to hit anybody that walks around. A divider goes out once again as soon as Barrett actually engages. And a couple shots from Zero are just going to be eaten up by that divider. Hype Unit are definitely taking their time, being very strategic about how they're approaching this point capture in these fights. I mean, if they can just find the right amount of explosiveness here, Payan could do, go down. I mean, he's incredibly low. Zero not getting too aggressive, actually going to get aggressive on. Going to try to fight this back, and with a Faith Flight, might be able to do so. Yeah, but the Furia heal, pop, follow that up with a good shield just for just from off of that little heal that she has for Furia. It's just going to be able to keep him alive and well and allow him to be able to get rid of that Willow that just ended up Faith Flight. They're going to be able to turn or at least look at Tuga. He's going to eat a lot of damage, but he's just going to have to back off. They've already captured the point. Hype unit managing to get the first point for him on Surfer Beach. You know, I don't know if I said it at all last week, I don't know when the last time I said it was. <laughs> Tay's really good as an off tank. Yeah. <laughs> and, like, <laughs> that's all that that needs to be said about this. His Atlas is looking really, really solid right now. But just good cooldown usage, good shots, as well as the fact that he seems to just understand his rotations so well. So perfectly positioned in, in a lot of these fights where it's just all of a sudden making the big difference or causing a big distraction factor. Even here, while the rest of his team is going down, he's still kind of putting pressure onto everybody around five stack. Well, Tuga's able to at least open the door for his team to be able to fight back in the form of a double kill, getting rid of two of the frontliners. And now they're just going to apply that pressure onto the rest of the teammates that are alive on Hype Unit. But they've got three ultimates up, almost four. Five stack only really half three. The exile actually gets used not only just really just to, to zone, I believe, but no hits yet. Everyone's standing on the points being contested. Once again, no confirm for anything on in terms of a fight. 
Yeah, screamed about the the exile shots coming out, and uh, well, oh, canceled okay. it immediately. Nice use of well bullets, I guess there for the <laughs> as he uh, he burns down that should have consumed, and I think it did consume the dome shield here. Barrack is one of the the few champions left where it doesn't have to fully deploy because technically that shield comes out almost instantaneously. So the turret, oh, nice. while still consuming itself did pop up, and so he's only at 10%. That's a great ult to stall out and, and burn down. The divider goes out, prevent himself from taking any more shots than necessary. They actually just use the seismic crash directly on the barrack, but Edgem goes down. Nice pyre strike. Still gets sent out. Stuns Maeve. Stuns Tuga. So he's not able to get a little bit of that bonus damage, but Amadeus actually gets two. He gets rid of T-Mac. He gets rid of Edgem. Two of them are gone, and now Payne's going to find his opening on Amadeus, but the fight's still going either way. Well, you finally lose to Throner, but this is the best thing about having, well, three tanks is that there's another tank available. Pan goes down shortly thereafter. So Tay should be respawning. You can see him running back. The same with Throner and the rest of the team. But I don't know if they have what it takes to get overtime here. Neither do I. Five seconds still available up on the clock. And, I mean, they're just, I don't think they're going to be able to touch either, Gore. Yeah, they're not going to be able to. We're tied at a 1-1 one, one right now. But we've got some ultimates ready. I mean, we have Illusory Riff. You have Scout on five stack. But Hype Unit, I mean, they've got the End Flame. That's going to be huge. They've got Exile, and they have Enlightenment. So the Ultimate Economy is sort of tilting towards Hype Unit right now. And they have a ton of kills, but it's all on pain. Now that's kind of the, the one thing that they're missing, I think, is more performance from Edgem, more performance from Tay to be able to kind of come through. Tay has had really good shots, really good positioning, really good CC. So when you factor that together with Payne, maybe that starts to equalize out a little bit more. But 2-3-2... Two, and two, Sitting pretty far down on the damage charts right now, the Leon needs a little bit more to kind of pick up. And it's not an easy role to be in. I mean, you've got two champions that are going to cause trouble for you and two gun zero here on, on the Maven Willow. And then just toe-to-toe, -to -toe, you're going to be knocking skulls with Amadeus in every single shot you fire. Had to play it very carefully. The hype units still have that potential. We've seen Edgem do really well. He just has to win the side fight. Yeah, the Inflame actually ends up going out. A good hook onto the Barrack, though, force him off the top. And the Illusory Rift has to go out just to make sure that he stays alive. The Exile is there. He's looking for any other targets. going to look back at Barrack. Exile him again. Just keep him zoned out and really, really annoyed at that point to make sure he doesn't is not able to touch. 18% already for Hype Unit, and it's growing. It's allowing them to keep, point, to keep the point pressure and force potential fights. But no kills yet, though. Nothing big, and well, except for that giant stasis field <laughs> that you're now looking at. It's going to be able to cause a little bit more patience, I think, for for Hype Unit. It's only going to be up for five seconds. So Zero is still going to be able to get some good damage in off of it. But it's a nice little reprieve from the pressure. As Hype Unit right now, they're the ones standing on the point with Tugan gone. Edgem all of a sudden can get Ooh. aggressive. 75% for Hype Unit, and now we're sitting at 84. One of them is gone, just like you said. Tuga's down, and now you're going to see them being pushed up, or at least pushed in back towards their spawn. The hook actually ends up getting blocked by the shield, but Tay's still on the side. He was able to find a kill on Amadeus, and that's still going to force Five Stat to stay where they are. They can't really push up. Good shot from Edgem, leave zero at literally 78 health, and they're still being forced to stay where they are. All they need is something that can kind of seal the deal here. They got caught up on the last corner. And, well, now they're going to go Ancient Rage oh, to try and create a big zone. But, I mean, ultimately, especially for big game, Amadeus, I love the way he's playing it. Big game does percentage damage. If you're going to have 10K health, he's going to oh, go man. in. It ends up costing him his life, but I like the call. Yeah, Payne gets rid of Zero. Throner gets rid of Amadeus. Dome Shield gets dropped in main, but the rest of his team is falling down. The rest of his team aren't there to help him. The Dome Shield is there just to stall, but at what cost? You lose the rest of your team, and you hype you to have three ultimates up online. So does Five Stack, but they're the ones pushing the payload. With a minute 35 still available, they have plenty of time to play this however it is they want to. And they're still forcing people to back off. The Inflame just to confirm that they want to be able to continue pushing the Midnight just to give them a little bit of a fighting chance. But still, the payload's going, and Hype Unit are standing their ground. All they have to do is keep pushing forward. No ults available, or a couple ults available for Hype Unit if they want to be able to go forward with it. Nothing available for 5 sack as they're trying to find anything and everything for this defense. And with that Fae Flight, that Illusory Rift, they're going to buy themselves a little bit of time. A minute left on the clock. And so the question turns around and actually right on its head for Hype Unit and how much more they want to commit to this to try and convert it. I mean, going into 2 when they've been winning as hard as they have is not necessarily the end of the world for the game. 
they, they use the exile though. They actually want to open up with that too, just in the back line. They don't really seem to be too bothered by him. They stun Matoru once again, force that exile. No one can be healed for a very brief amount of time, but still they're going to be able to at least try and push. They're trying to find their way out of orange. They actually get rid of zero. Tuga tries to escape, but actually gets shot in the back by T Mac. They've taken care of two of their team members. Towards the end of the round, you have a seismic crash that follows true. Well, that rings true, I should say, and they are able to get the kill on Ice Monkey because of that. I don't think I've heard anyone have their bell rung as much as you do when you're up against an Atlas. Like yeah. when, you, when you're just standing there, and unfortunately for Ice Monkey, he was the recipient of that damage. And it's only 900, but they're all crits. They're all causing extra damage. And that's why you see Tay kind of the lone standing yeah. member of Hype Unit in an ocean of five stack. Damage numbers, Amadeus, ridiculously ahead of everybody else. And then go down to 59,000, 55,000 there for Tay. All sitting about 6,000. Even the lowest member, the the, uh, the Barrack Ice Monkey here, is 6,000 ahead of Edgem. And that's maybe going to make or break this when it comes down to it. Edgem is getting a lot of kills, was a lot more comfortable that last round, but still kind of held under wraps. This time around, no chains really holding him back. If he can get into a good position, this game might just end before they can really do anything about it on the side of five stack. Oh man, they're just converging on Ice Bucky. Doesn't have a chance to be able to escape that one. Gets hooked. The rest of, well, now I can't say the rest, all three frontliners focus fire on him. He goes down and look at this zone that they have, or at least look at the position it is they're holding. They put out the divider already. It's going to be over CDR. They're getting good shots up to their back line. It's not really allowing anyone to move forward, at least as much as they probably like to. But the Faith Flight gets used. You use the Midnight as well just to create an opening for them. A good dead zone. Shots are coming out. Blast power stacking. They're looking at the Throner. He's eating a lot, but the DR is there. And you got 60% to 58. A kill on a zero. And you're still looking good. I mean, at this point, being able to set yourself up for it, 60%, not only still looking good, but, well, now starting to look even better. They've been able to pick up kills. Amadeus going to get zoned out. Ice Monkey's gone. Now with Amadeus going down, it makes it a lot easier to just close this one out if they want. Matoru gets taken care of. So does Amadeus. Ice Monkey, just like you were saying, Gore, 99% on the point, and the game is already done. Hype unit, first game in this set against them. Cleanly played from top to bottom. They knew what they were doing. They knew what they wanted to do as they came into it, so they just were prepared. Yeah. And being able to hold on to it, triple front line, you get Atlas, you get Makoa. Not too surprising to see you do really well with them. Tay played the Atlas really well. Payan, who I kind of wouldn't have expected to have a Makoa in his mm. pocket, being able to pull that out, hit consistent hooks, very good pressure right. with his ult, the Ancient Rage as well. Just kind of made things easy for them Yeah, as a whole. Right. It just made it a lot easier for him, just as you were saying. In the post game, though, you see a little bit more and get to extrapolate a little bit more details from that match. Jeez, Amadeus has a lot of has a lot of damage at least for this game 100 2000 yeah. but you're running triple front liner. I mean it's to be expected when you've got a lot of healthy targets but the healing is where the magic is. I mean 172,000 for Team Mac, 106,000 for Mutoriu. I mean that inflame along with just the fury of the positioning was just so well. Even the slash lines are good on hype. Yeah, and that's the thing. Furia the, what she brings to the table is not just the healing. It's not honestly just the damage or the damage boost, sorry, either. She does a good amount of damage herself. She hits three points that you want for a support, and T-Mac was able to kind of showcase that. Muto dude, did pretty much whatever he could, but unfortunately for him, it wasn't enough to kind of keep the team afloat, keep things going. Even with Amadeus' damage numbers, they didn't get anywhere near as many eliminations. Speaking of eliminations, they were abundant on the side of Hype Unit. Yeah, that's for sure. I mean, you brought up before, Tay is a really, really good off tank. I mean, that divider just paid off in dividends for Hype Unit to be able to continue their pressure, find their openings, create openings for themselves. Even with that, basically beyond the veil, it's just that that card just allowing them to have that extra movement speed. So, so strong. I mean, I, I mean, that's just the power of Atlas alone. That's why he's always, that's why you always see him banned. He's just too good to let through. Yeah, he just controls the whole field yeah. forever. I mean, if you go, no matter what you go, if you go deja vu or if you go for, you know, the temporal divide, the giant stasis field, either way, you're going to be very, very potent. And 
And matchups like this where you have Willow and you're like, man, we need someone hit scan to help right. deal with it. Here's a 900 shot. Yeah. If, if I hit you in the head, 1300. What are you right. going to do about it? It's a lot of damage, and it seems to have caused a little bit more trouble for that Willow than I think they were anticipating. Well, hopefully they'll be able to clap back against Hypion at game one is already said and done. Serpent Beach is out of the way. Game two is on its way right after this break. Respawn, the official gaming chair of the Paladins Minor League. Game one comes to a close, and that's the convincing hype unit you look to see going up against Five Stack. They had the triple uh, backline Kresnik. We expected good things out of it. The Cassie, maybe the only silver lining for Five Stack. Technically even, good damage. Not enough, though. Yeah, for sure. It, it did decently, but again, just the pressure that Makoa and Atlas are outputting was unreal, honestly. The yeah. damage that they did, having that point tank pressure, too, from the Inara, I think, was a big part of it. Yeah, the Cassie did well, but you can't you got to at least enable the rest of your team, too, and Mako and Atlas just shut everyone else down. Yeah, I mean, two, two picks in, and you're yeah. thinking, oh, no, this doesn't look very good for uh, for five stack. It makes you question maybe the, the over-prioritization of this cast. I mean, it's been big for five stack throughout yeah. this split, and, and again, you see a good performance out of it. But you, you're giving away so much by first picking the Cassie. Yeah, if you're first picking Cassie on first pick, you might have to just first ban Makoa and Atlas. I guess that's true. If you're really that high prio on it, I, you, that's what you have to do. You just can't afford to give those up. Yeah, well, we'll have to see if they maybe adjust that into the future. I mean, unconventional bans, not really, but in the sense that, right, if you're going up against Makoa Atlas, just maybe ban one of the two away instead of giving both of them over to Hype Unit. That's map number one on Serpent Beach. Map number two, Bizarre, not banned out here in this set. So Five Stack looking to bounce back here one more time. We've seen a lot of triple DPS and, and triple frontline compositions, not necessarily on Bizarre, but just in yeah. general over the last couple of days. I feel like that's been the flavor of the day for, for Console League and here in the Minor League. Strix, one more time, first ban by Hype Unit and a Knessa as well. Interesting response. Yeah, interesting response, I would say. Like now Hype Unit can just ban... I, I was going to say, they could just ban Cassie, and they know that 5-stack aren't going to be happy. Love we'll to see where they end up here in the picks. Both power tanks getting through, and Furia also banned. So just mirroring whatever Hype Unit are banning to deny them, I guess, Monopoly on it. So Hype Unit is going to be able to start There's with Atlas. Yet. And now 5-stack are going to get Makoa Cassie. This is a much better look if yeah. that's how they want to go. And I, I mean, they could not. I'm just guessing what they're going to go. But just judging by what's left and how they've been prioritizing champions, I you don't think there's any car. other way they could possibly go. It's not a bad start. Big game does not get cleansed by second chance. Yep. So you have a decent counter to the Atlas, if, especially if he's running that health card at max, which a decent amount of Atlases do have a couple points in that card. I agree. This is a dream start for five stack. For you, sure. you get some of that off tank frontline one, presence one in the Makoa without giving them both away. Yep. And you get your tried and true DPS in Cassie Hype. You know they are going to get the Barrack, though. We're, we were kind of looking at some of the stats, and Barrack, the most picked mm. by far by about. 16 games over Anara, who's the second most picked in the NA minor league, but technically has a negative win rate at 40%, which is interesting looking at the Premier League where his win it's not rate is 40%, is it? Uh, 47%. Did okay. I say 40? That's a oh, no, very no. different number. 47% <laughs> win rate compared to the PPL, though, which is pushing 60% on the Barrack. Why that is, maybe there's some more stats to look at, but most picked, 
but loses a little over half of his games. You are I, not think the, I think the PPL here. thing is because the second pick team tends to get Barrack a lot. That's true. And the team that's winning is the winning one that's is always second, second pick. pick. Right. I think that kind of is is part of it. Makoa Damba and Nari is a pretty good tank line, pretty healthy. Oh, it's actually I was gonna say this wouldn't be a bad place for Sky. Honestly, yeah. Koei and Nari is like the dream sky composition. I don't know if Hype Unit are going to be willing to bring it out, but they do bring a triple tank again. My Definitely really ideal for it. Like and Willow is going to be good here too. I don't think it, Five Stack have a really hard counter for it right now. They still can grab that Leon, that Victor, the hit scan counters, but that'll be a very stationary comp, which I think the triple tank will do pretty well into. Yeah, they're going to round out with the Willow. On Bazaar, I, I think it's, it's an interesting look for Willow on mm -hmm. Bazaar. I think kind of the way that point fight plays out. If you get a good Fey Flight, you can get plenty of AoE damage down yeah. onto it. Maybe a Victor to round out here for five stack. The hit scan's what they want. I agree. I, I think Cassie, Victor, that's kind of right up this five stack Wave wheelhouse. Is done. They are going to lock it in. One more triple front line for Hype Unit. And I got to side with them again, I think. Atlas in a triple tank with... that. That is the three, other than maybe Ruckus on some maps, that to me is the three best tanks for triple tank, bar none. I agree. I think Hype Unit are feeling good about the draft that they've got. Let's send it down to your casters for game two on Bazaar. Thank you guys so much for the desk. I actually have a, a question to open up with for you, Gore. I mean, in the green room, I, I saw the Atlas pick, and I was like, they let him have it again. It was like a knee-jerk reaction. Yeah. But how do you feel about them getting the Atlas instead? I, I'm like, I mean, like, do, do you let them have it again? I mean, we highlighted Tay last go around and he popped off on it do you let him get it again like that it's really this awkward decision and it always comes when you when you're playing around with picks and bands that you don't want him to have atlas again but if you're going to let one through you get the other right so like it's that conversation of what can we do with makoa if we get makoa versus is it worth banning them out of, uh, on this map where maybe we could get some more potency right. out of our band. So they go Ooh. and decide to ban a couple of other targets. And now it's going to come down to Ice Monkey versus Tay. And, well, as of right now, it's coming up Tay. Yeah, I mean, it's looking real, real good for Hype Unit. 33% for him on the point. It's making it a lot easier for them to, uh, to really just try and control this space. I mean, the Willow doing really well. I mean, they're able to just pretty much watch all these quarters. It is hard for five seconds to even get in, and that's evidenced by them not being able to touch the point, but a good opening kill on the pan, that's definitely a start, and that's how you want to lead when you're trying to get to this point. A couple of good shots here. Tuga in a good position as well, and actually a great flank nice. between him and Ice Monkey to get rid of Tay. Nice. He's going to be able to open this up. 96%, but it will get stalled out. Five stacks should be able to move in if they get a kill onto the Throner, which they do. They'll be able to sit here pretty comfortably. Enough time for Hype Unit to regroup, come back in for one more fight, but definitely keeping them on their toes. 39% for five stack. They've finally been able to actually touch the point. Good flanks, good damage all around to net them this zone, as well as the, the positioning they need. Keep them from getting back as easy. The barrage actually just ends up opening up. The wall goes out as well, but they're already underneath the bridge. I mean, they're just going to try and go in, try and touch. That's just that wall's already on cooldown. They're going to be able to touch, cause that overtime, and allow the rest of the team to get there. 96 to 99% for Hype Unit at five stack. Unfortunately, though, that 99% is going to turn to 100 here for Zeros. Oh, and he's going to be able to get a nice stun onto the Throner. It's causing some trouble for him, but that's going to be the illusory rift to keep everyone going. They still lose Tay in the process. Yeah, Denzel gets dropped immediately on the Zero, though. I mean, they have Pay and they have the Willow. They have the means. It's just a matter of how they want to use them. They traded one for one. Dreadsever got used. Ancient Rage as well, just so they can actually capitalize on this point fight. The hook goes wide. It actually misses. And now they're going to be able to converge on Mako on point. They're just free firing at him. He can't use anything in response to that. The barrage gets used, but they've already captured it. Hype unit with the first point on Bazaar. And that comes down to overtime, but also just really well-timed ultimates. Good play from Hype Unit. And as much as Payan helped save the day with a good Fae Flight that allowed and allotted a lot of damage, I think that one rolls back to that Illusory Rift. Once that got popped to, to keep Dethroner alive and afloat on the objective, Dethroner's able to charge up the rest of his Dome Shield, stay in the fight, stay healthy, and continue getting damage kind of in tandem with Payan from the sky, which made it incredibly difficult for the Zanara for Zero to, to do anything after he had already used his ult. 
Good rewind onto Anara. The shell shield tries to get used. As a result, nice exile all the way in the back onto Victor. Gonna try and hit Ice Monkey again, but whiffs just a little bit. Victor's really, really low, so he's gonna have to back up. Dread Siri gets used to keep them from pushing as much as they'd want to. Illusory Rift to try and counter out that Dread Serpent. And it's just so, so good for them to be able to continue this push a minute and 30. But they've got the first point as well. I mean, Five Stacker just trying to find their kills or at least use their ultimates to get a good position. But a good rewind on Amadeus. This might be the kill for, for Tay, but he's going to have to actually back off. It's at least looking like it should not necessarily seal the deal for them, but seal him away. Put Amadeus maybe into a little bit of tombs as they can't leave their base. And they just had to watch that one get walked in. Very well played from Hype Unit in a lot of these moments. More aggressive towards the end. And I think that's what kind of helped solidify that style of play. Is recognizing that they don't really have to hold back. Pans 3-1. and one, A lot more widespread kills this time around. And the two biggest threats I would argue on 5-stack are going to be Tuga and Ice Monkey. And Ice Monkey's been kind of being dealt with in a lot of these scenarios. Him getting aggressive has caused trouble for them, but at the end of the day, Hype Unit have been able to shrug off most of these Makoa hooks. Yeah, I mean, two. The, the, the Cassie and the Victor are both leading in terms of damage, but I think Hype Unit are just playing it extremely well. It's a matter of how five stack want to approach this next mid fight that's going to make all the difference. Tay is actually managing to meet Ice Monkey. He's got the divider as well. Just throws it out. Also blocked for him. The barrage comes through. It's just the barrage comes through too. He used the second chance to give himself a little bit more health. But good shots from him are going to leave from Akoa. Really, really low. He's standing directly in the dead zone. Tuga gets dealt with, but so does Tay on the side. Now they're just swapping from target to target. Man to man, and they're going to get rid of Ice Monkey. They're going to get rid of Amadeus, and they're going to be able to continue to capture this point for Hype. And Jim, with that last little kill and a good stagger onto the support, makes this seem a lot more likely to just well, kind of stay as is. Zero is going to be able to move in. Tries to wall himself off from damage and only kind of partially successfully does so. Doesn't last long, though, as that 84 is going to keep on ticking forward with no Nara on the side for five stack. Yeah, the seismic crash actually gets used, but it doesn't matter. I believe Team Mac actually just swapped himself with Illusion, so he wouldn't actually get stunned. No one can capitalize on that one. 99% to three. The Throner finds another kill onto Matoryu. Edge him. It's just on a nine streak, a seven streak, a 12 streak, a 10 streak. I mean, Hype Unit are here to play. They've gotten their third point on Bazaar. And I mean, they could potentially just end up ending it off of this push if they're playing how they've been playing. Yeah, I mean, the amount of aggression that's been coming down. I would argue this is one of the best lineups to be running Cassie into because she can do so much damage. But you're running out of one thing and the one thing that Hype Unit have, and that is just you don't have anywhere near the amount of time they do. They are just right. staying alive in so many scenarios. And even when they get taken down, you get moments like this where it's like, okay, we might go down, but we're going to make you invest as much as we possibly can in order to get rid of us. And because of that, you know, hey, cool, five stack gets a defense, a minute 45 left on the clock. They have a minute and a half left that they have to stop this. Luckily, they're about to have three ults coming up as Victor finishes off Barrage. Scout, you can maybe not count, so maybe you only want to count two of them, but you're running pretty close to empty here to try and stop Hype Unit. Well, if Faith Flight gets used, so does the Scout, just to see where everyone is. But, I mean, payne has got his sights on the Cassie. He's looking to apply some pressure. Barrage is actually used, but it, and all of the charges get used at that but not a kill pops up for five stack already. They've got the illusory rift, which they just used. Victor's once again in the dead zone. And I mean, they're just firing on all cylinders here. Divider goes out. Victor can't actually hit the targets. They get rid of Ice Monkey. Pay is really low, but a good overpower through the fence is gonna be able to net them a kill on the Tuga. And just being able to find that should start getting the payload moving again. It's gonna be difficult, but now Anara doesn't have anyone near. Strong enough, I guess, to defend her. She's going to get a seismic crash. A nice hook on the edge of them. They're looking to walk this in. They could still get the 4 0. Shell spin directly back on the point. They could keep contesting. And I mean, the con has to back back. They're, they're, they're going to try and push him back. 
but they've only got 25 seconds left on the clock. Hypuna have to make something happen if they really, really want to be able to push this one in. But no ultimates are online on either side. Payne is definitely free firing right now. The wall goes up to preserve, preserve, excuse me, prevent himself from taking any more damage. The shell spin, the, the, the shell shield actually goes out, but it still blocks a little bit of the damage that actually is being dealt to him. But Payne finally killing the Amadeus. He got the Fae Flight as well. They're going to take yeah. care of Zero, and this looks like it could be it. I mean, shots are going to be good. There's yep. no one that is tanky enough to try and withhold that one. So Hype Unit takes them a little bit to get, like, the traction under their feet, but they ultimately do it. More like right. trudging through mud, really. It's like you didn't get the full sprint that they wanted. It took a little bit of force and effort to get there, but they still got the job done. Yeah, that's for sure. I mean, I, we actually don't see... I mean, I'm not, it's, it's either because she's banned or, I mean, she's just not as yeah. prioritized on this map. But Willow actually did really, really well there. I mean, we don't see, I mean, we've seen Strix, we've seen Kinesa. Willow gets picked here, but I believe that's because of, like, the, the issue with the sidelines that you can have on Bazaar, right? There's not a lot of places that she can go that wouldn't really provide sufficient cover, but Payne did pretty well despite that. They played it really well, and I, I think it mainly had to do with the fact that you could have Edgem and Tay get so aggressive right. that, that makes sense. the attention is kind of on these big, burly frontliners and not on, on Willow. And even though, you know, 6-2, 4-3, three, 3 and 4, Edgem did really well. Mm. But the slash line that's the most impressive is Pay in the 9-2 and 7. He was just untouched by them. Right. And, you know, just to draw comparisons, they essentially... He was in the pocket. He had a really good offensive line in front of him that just kept him safe and let him do whatever he needed to from the back line. Yeah, one one and fourteen. I mean, for T Mac, I mean, the credits are all there. The healing was all there. But I've already said his name before. Paying man on this Willow, like the able to create. This is why Willow is especially banned. I mean, into a Nara Makoa. I mean, I don't think you can pick Willow into a better team, like into a, into a better front line composition on the enemy team to be able to really, really rain hell down on. Yeah, and it also helps, especially in moments like this, but there's a wall. That wall, not on his team, but it's giving him cover. It's allowing him to stay safe in, in moments like that. As well as the fact that when you look at the lineup for five stack, there was one person who could really deal with Willow. Yeah. And in none of these highlights where Payne's doing well, are they present. Mm -hmm. Until right there, Victor starts shooting at him. But even then, he's just like, well, I've just eliminated right. everybody else. I'm just going to go ahead and... And then shoot you twice, and what are Call you going to do about it? Right, exactly. I mean, literally, what can you do about that situation? I mean, Tay with the divider as well made it harder for Victor to actually try and penetrate, try and get those shots, get yeah. those kills. I mean, their draft was just on point. They pull out another triple front line composition. Two, game two is already said and done, but right after this break, we'll be right into game three. Alienware the official PC provider of the Paladins Minor League. We can shine in a crowd, we never hesitate. Let us rise through the clouds. We got nothing to lose, I know the time is right. Let us light up the fuse. And I know, and I know, and I know, and I know we're perfect, you and I. And I don't, and I don't, and I don't, and I don't give it up without a fight. What I feel, what I feel, I know it's right. Let us start to make the night. Triple tank, one more time for Hype Unit. They grab the win on Bizarre 4-0. Kresnik, you mentioned it to me. We don't normally see 4-0s on Bizarre. I guess this is a, a confident Hype Unit team. Yeah. They really are feeling out these triple frontline compositions, and they're working. Because they're just getting it gifted to them every That's time. True. I mean, the prioritization from 5-stack is just giving it away. Cassie can do good at shredding tanks, but... Not enough. Not enough to burn through triple tank. There's right. a, it's just too overwhelming. Somersault can only get you so far away when those tanks are barreling straight down at you, especially with the ones that Hype got. I mean, yep. again, that was that was key. That was the best three you could possibly ask for in triple tank. Yeah, and I think, again, you look back at game one, you look how this game went on Bizarre. 
really where I expected Hype Unit to be yeah. today. I mean, Five Stack have been good all split long about putting up fights against a lot of these these teams that are ahead of them in the standings. I really needed and wanted Hype Unit with a convincing couple of games here today. And they found that big 4-0, yep. 4-1 to start off uh, the day. Maybe set three will be a little bit different for Five Stack. Get something going in their favor. Jaguar Falls awaits. So that's at least a little bit different maybe, but still a map where triple front line could work. And usually a map where the... I, I, I hate saying this, but usually a map where the, the better team takes sure. it a lot of the time. It kind of is a skill check in a lot of ways, unless you have some crazy draft. And I think Hyper definitely looking like the better team today, mm -hmm. the way that they're playing. So interesting that 5 Stack decide to go here, but maybe they have something in the pocket. And I said it. I said if they want Cassie first pick, they have to do this. You got to ban Atlas and maybe Koa on first pick. Are they going to do it? That would be amazing to me because that, that really is just giving away <laughs> a lot of utility. Right. Please ban Cassie Hype. Please. That's all I want right now. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's just smart. I mean, yeah. that, that is telegraphing what you want. You can't ban that on first pick. I mean, that's... Come on. <laughs> so they grab Barrick. They did. Who's that's been good. The, the far and away highest pick here in the NA minor league. 90% pick rate. Yeah. Still hovering around 47% win rate. I will bring Hype it are going to pivot themselves to the Furia. Now I'm curious, actually, for five stack where they go DPS-wise. I mean, Cassie has been their cornerstone. I know Leon has had some good do games they just for him. Maybe you do. <laughs> uh, right. Shaolin has a bow. They Shaolin has a bow. Arrows. Shaolin can do it, some it, damage like with arrows. It's like old beta Cassie bow, right? They can make right. that work. Shaolin has a 100% win rate in the NA minor league. You're through, is that about to change? Through two games played. That's so true. I, so the next time you I think you have to take that with a grain of salt. It is going to be uh, Leon here, and, and I think can't get the Cassie. Obviously, Cassie is good for numerous re reasons. Yeah. Leon, though, good fallback pick for them. For sure. And Leon's also great at countering flankers, having that burst damage. Speaking of burst damage, strikes on Jaguar Falls. Going to be really good at just dealing with anything that dives onto him. Very, mm. very hard to get on. And also just having the, the flare bouncing right. around the corners. There's so many little corners, you can just shoot them against the walls and get them into rooms and potentially you catch people you wouldn't be able to get here. any other way. Yeah, I'm trying to I'm trying to think, you know, obviously we're seeing Strix more and more, and, and I'm really trying to feel out over the next couple of weeks uh, prior to that qualifier I tournament. Yeah. What maps people Stay maybe don't like Strix on? Zero. And I, 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 it's, it's starting to appear like literally none. I think Strix yeah. just kind of works anywhere. If you're good enough with them, you can. That's what it comes down to, and these are the players that are good enough. That 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 is really all it is. Sure. If you can hit every shot, he's good everywhere. It's better than Kinesa because Kinesa has to wait to do her full damage. Right. The same damage that Strix does. No so way. Strix is just purely better. Let's okay. go. This is a map. This is a good map for him. We've seen NIP pull him out, I think, all the way back in, like, worlds even, or, yeah. or early in phase one. It can be good on this map. Scuttle around those corners is tough to deal with. You have Strix for the direct damage. This is a, a really good spot for Dredge. I'm excited for Hype Unit's draft. Dredge picked twice in the NA Minor League. One win, one loss. Tiebreaker for Dredge and for Hype Unit to end their split with a win. Coming at you on Jaguar Falls. Army mateys, welcome down to game three. I'm happy. Dredge is here. Yeah, Dredge is... I... I don't remember the last time it was we even saw. I don't remember what game it was that we saw him in. I, I know, know NIP did it. Payan played it this phase because I think I can't remember what I said exactly about it, but I think I said something about that being the most success Dredge is going to see all phase. <laughs> and then Hype Unit were all like, "All right, we're going to play him more," and then they didn't touch him again <laughs> until this week. But they are. I'm pretty sure if it, I think Dave said twice in the minor league, they're the one win. I can't remember who was the one lost, but it's going to be right. able to come through. Payan makes him look good. This is a good map for him. And you can see Dark Bargain 5, probably the most important card, keeping him alive, healing him up. It's very similar to Barrick and his, his healing station. And then I would say Hangman's Ire, just being able to get that 600 health shield. It's only three seconds, but it's going to be enough to keep you going in a lot of these kind of more iffy situations. Jeez, does he do a lot of damage. Oh my gosh, a good air shot. And an even better wall. Now Ice Monkey's stuck in behind the, He's literally stuck against the wall. He can't really move out. He's eating 850 for the first two shots it was that just hit him. 15% for hype unit already. The shortcut is available. Throws out the harpoon, but he gets charged on by Ice Monkey. Payton is just going to be sitting here 
free fire and not worrying about a single thing. 42% for Hype Unit, and it's going to actually force Ice Monkey to charge out while he's just running them down holding left click. So yeah, I think I was talking about this earlier, and I think it's very convenient the dredge came up today. One of the things Willow does best is say, hey, you can't stand Damn. here yep. or else I'm going to kill you. Dredge does that, but he only does the killing part. He doesn't yeah. really do the, hey, you can't heal here. He just says, if you step here, mm -hmm. I will kill you. <laughs> and that is all that you're going to be able to get out of it. Finally, a little bit of return from Vive Stack towards the end, but it's only, what, one kill to what Hype Unit have been able to pick up, including the objective now? Yeah, I mean, undying for Payan, undying for Tay, undying for everybody except for Edgem. But I mean, you got the dredge to back you up. I mean, you just see it firing just <laughs> like over his shoulder right there. They're just throwing out as many grenades as they possibly can. And you got a two minutes left as well, at least in this, what could be in this round. But they actually open up with the end flame. They're putting a lot of pressure on the ice monkey. He gets void grip, Payan does, but he's able to at least finish him off with a couple of good grenades to face. Ice Buggy's not going to be able to stand it any longer. There are not many scenarios like that that are going to cause me to feel frightened for your team. But I'm feeling a little fight frightened <laughs> for, for five stack. There's not a lot of options I'm seeing that are, are possible. I mean, the front lines are trying to get aggressive. They get melted. The DPS can't do anything like Evie. Poor, poor Evie only has 1,800 health. Yep. Will dredge. If he hits her with one shot, and then reloads and, and gets the splash damage on well, she's dead. She right. can't fight him. And even if she tries to get to him, he's got backups because he's got Strix. Like, it's just yep. well played from Hype Unit. A good draft so far as well. It's going to take a lot Ooh. from Five Stack to turn this one on attack. Yeah, Dome Shield gets dropped. Just a force to throw her a little bit more back. Try and get in that ground. Ice Storm gets dropped on as well, but he's already moved out of it. They're really just going to have to try and back up and look for another opportunity. A good shot from Edgem also forces Eevee back behind that corner. Dumb days manages to pick off the Throner. 45 seconds left. They're just going to wait a little bit longer before their point take can come back. And this is the best bet I think you have as five stack is just try to kill the Throner on cooldown, and I think you can genuinely stall this game out enough to, to, to find yourself defenses. If you can do it on the uh, the mid-fight as well, that's probably your next second best bet. But it's not going to be an easy task to do, especially when you're getting good shots coming from Edrum and good control coming down from Payan. He's about to have that Kraken available as well. And with this oh, amount of aggression, this amount of control, uh, you might not even need it to seal the deal. Yeah, the Inflame ends up coming out as well. Tay with a good old double. Of course, he's broadside to try and deny some areas over there. The flashbang goes out. Barry can't see anything, and now the rest of them are just Jeez. following up on him. My goodness, they even used the dredge hole to try and capitalize on his positioning right there. The wall goes up, but still being able to contest through the wall. Edge him just all the way in the back. Tries to go for the quick scope, but Ice Monkey actually charges off of the point. Yeah, kind of an interesting decision to dash forward there. But then again, it was kind of met with, do I damage reduce and, and just hope they stop me and knock me back and I can stay in overtime? Or do I just die on the point? It was kind of a choice of where do you want to die more than when and how. This dredge. Too much damage to deal with. Amadeus yeah. is still taking top damage away from him, but I think Payne's just, again, denial of service, denial of area, whatever you want to call it. They aren't allowed to get near the objective because of the damage he's able to do. And this is pre-buff. Like, the ROM patch that's coming out, you know what, next week-ish, sometime yeah, in the next few there. weeks, we're going to see Dredge have that more, like, more damage on his Kraken with the deploy that it has right now. And if you use it properly, in, which Payne has showcased that he can, I anticipate seeing maybe a little bit more of him come around. We won't get to see that in time for the World Championship, but... I don't mind the idea of players keeping them in the back pocket for yeah. moments like this. Neither do I. 12% for hype unit and a good overpower on the on the zero. It's going to force him off of the side and away from the point. It's going to be able to force them to at least back off and give hype unit a little bit more respect. <clears throat> Excuse me. They've got a seismic crash available as well. Shoulder bash their way out to avoid any more damage taken. The pain and the rest of them are just zoning them out like this. I mean, Dredge doing what he does best, and that's holding left click. And well, sometimes he has to press R. Let's yeah, be honest. He, yeah, has yeah. To, he has to do that too to get his full damage combo off. Finally, Eevee's going to be going for him and gets the kill nice. to displace this pan, this dredge, get rid of him. But now, Inflame 
going to be coming up. Strix still alive and able. Might be able to cause some trouble here as it's 75 to 50. Yeah, he's looking for at least a good shot. T Mac gets taken care of, but 81% for a hype unit. Flare actually goes out as well. Eevee's all the way in the back, though. <clears throat> They're going to force them at least a little bit further away from the point, but they know they're behind there. They know they're waiting. 89% to 81 and 97%. I mean, with comeback mechanic, five stack are able to capture the point. Very solid from them to play kind of distraction factor. You can't leave Tuga alone behind you, and you can't focus on him and the objective at the same time. You had to make a choice, and for Hype Unit, a couple chose to watch over that, oh. and it's not going to work out. What a beautiful shot from Muto Ryu. to be able to find Tay and Pay in there. It's going to keep this payload moving very, very well off to a start of a push. Two minutes left. Beautiful, beautiful through time and space to be able to capitalize on the overpower. Turned around, put your back to him. You're actually going to get punished just like that. A minute and 45 still available as well. I mean, the clock steadily ticking down. Everyone's sort of just biding their time. Tuga might be in a bit of a rough spot, but he has Sora to make sure he can escape that situation. And the payload's still pushing, but Ice Bucky actually looking pretty low. Forced to shoulder bash his way away from the danger. And the rest of Hype Unit are just going to be able to hold right here. He gets away there. Not only does he shoulder bash to get away, but he successfully stays alive. And so Ice Monkey puts some pressure on the side. Under the ire here oh, check now the of Hype Unit. And they're going to be able to find a lot of good damage onto him. A minute 15 left. The kills are starting to slowly but surely come up in favor of Hype Unit. And if they can get Barrack here, which looks like it's more of a when they get Barrack and not if they get Barrack, they're going to be able to slow this out, get aggressive. And with only a minute left, five stack are going to need something big to get back to that payload. I agree. Two to one, three ultimates up for Hype Unit, almost a fourth <clears throat> for the flashbang. You have two ults as well for five stack. I mean, you almost have the assert dominance, but a good kill on the edge of on the side. That's going to mean a lot for five stack esports as they're going to be able to try and now focus their attention on the Throner. But a good wall is going to allow them to peel, but they might actually be in a bad spot. He gets killed. The assert dominance actually in the back line while the payload is still pushing. Hype unit actually have to try and fall back to defend if they can. And they definitely need to pay attention to it. They're going to be able to get some control back there. That's three, four clean kills in a row here. Four, five stack esports to be able to come back in onto the payload, move things forward. Wow. They're going to drop the dome shield. They're looking to convert this. They are. At 10 seconds left. Edgem goes down. So does Payton. A good flick from zero. They're going to take care of that dredge. And that's going to net them that second point. This is the cool three space it was that we saw. Slow mo just actually going to be able to hit Tay, able to hit Payton. And I mean, that just, that, that provided a lot of space and a lot of opportunity for five stack. And it was such a good angle. Yeah. I mean, that, I, honestly, like, if Tay had been holding anyone on his team, if that was something that was physically possible, that's a triple kill right there. He essentially hit Ice Monkey while he was falling through the sky. But lucky for him, it only got rid of, well, two of maybe the Five, highest priority targets four, on Hype Unit. Three, two, He's going to be able to deal one. with them. Payin, after a really good first round, a lackluster second round, three, four, and six. But he has the full deft hands, which based on what we saw in his loadout earlier, he's going to need all of it for that reload speed. Oh, man. And now he's going to be firing at full effect. Yeah, especially when you've got that in-play match or back. You're looking for not only an opportunity Jeez. to be able to fight, but an opportunity to be able to kill and kill they will. Hype unit with already two kills under their belt in the very first few seconds of the game. The in-flame to start things off. And that reload speed for Payne, I mean, that is so so important. Bouncing the grenades off the wall. He's going to be able to get the hits. And the Throner is going to be able to get the last one. 69% for Hype Unit. You've got Overpower. You've got Seismic Crash as well. And I mean, you almost got yourself a point. If you're a Hype Unit, you're sitting pretty, not worried about a single. And thing. my favorite thing out of all of that, everything that they could have done, it's the fact that Pan is not shying away from the Harpoon. One of the things that I hate seeing when Dredge gets locked in is people avoid it. They just don't even ever, they never tap it. Right. You will see left click, you'll see reload. Occasionally, you'll see the Kraken when it's up, and you'll see broadside, but you never see them throw the harpoon. But Payan taking good advantage of the fact that it slows. It allows you to kind of enable your damage more often. You guarantee some shots connecting now. And if used in tandem with the Kraken, you might be able to just guarantee that damage as well. It's a lot of good burst, and it's a good skill coming down from him. 
So I have no idea how much they spend practicing Dredge, but it's nice to know that he has them here at, at this level. I agree with that too. I mean, Ice Monkey just sort of getting run down right there. Has the shoulder bash out. Successfully escapes. Harpoon right to the back. But this is where I think Payne actually just really wants to be. Is around these little small rooms right here. He's just tossing out a bunch of grenades. Ice Storm gets dropped, but he puts down the shortcut to heal him. Keep him juiced up so that way he can actually stay in this fight. Tay's there as well, but the inflame at their back. Now they're just going to start running at people. Amadeus is a perfect example of that. As Tay, as soon as he hears the inflame, just starts walking him down. Now they're looking at Ice Monkey and a few others on five stack esports side. They've got three ultimates. They have to drop the dome shield to get that zone going, but they've still got a minute 10 left and they've got a flashbang and almost a seismic crash to support Hype. Yeah, and Zero trying to do any Anything and everything he can, but that dome shield disappears too soon for him. And with a minute left, Hive Unit are walking around the last corner. They have the potential to be able to close this one out. A kill on to zero is nice. definitely going to enable this to start moving again. The flare is going to open up a lot. Things a good pyre strike directly on the Tuga. He's actually going to stun him right out of the air. They're going to be able to follow up and complete that kill. Give himself a little bit of damage immunity and allowing that shortcut to give him such a huge jump height on that. He actually just keeps throwing out as many grenades as possible. They're zoning them out, and I don't think they'll be able to touch, especially with the Dredge ult right on point in Hype Unit. Clean 3-0 over 5 stack. And that was probably the best timing you could have had if you're paying, where it's just like shot, shot, shot. Oh, now I have my Kraken. Good luck touching the payload. Right. Was able to kind of maintain that, keep things rolling for them, mm. and ultimately keep them zoned away, mm -hmm. find a lot of damage. I'm really excited to see what his damage numbers are at the end of this because yeah. that was a lot to have in one area. Mm, it was, and we can see it right here post game. see what it is. He has a store, and it's 91,000. Actually a little bit shorter, or at least a few thousand off from Amadeus, I should say. But the control that Payne was able to put out throughout that match, literally, doesn't matter if whatever the damage is, they li they, there are a lot of places they just could not walk because of the dredge. Yeah, and that's the biggest thing, especially on a map like Jack Falls. Mm -hmm. Here's an opening, what, four across the entire right. map to get back in to where the objective is. And he just says, cool, you're over there. Good luck walking through this. It's a minefield, and, well, when you have a minefield, something like dredge, you can find yourself a win, and that's what Payne did once again. Yeah, I mean, you can see it literally right here. This is the dredge experience. He's going to toss up that scuttle. He's going to keep throwing out grenades, harpoon, and then a direct air shot with that grenade. So, so well done by Payne. And I mean, this is just it. If you think of the care, if you think of area, if you think of area denial, excuse me, this is what you would imagine. This is literally just what Dredge does, and it's what he does best. Blow you up. Yeah. Blow you up real good at the end <laughs> of the day. And this is another great example, like being able to kind of keep yourself healed. You get a nice jump. That's one of my favorite cards in his loadout just for a second after you. You don't need it longer than right. a second. Just that first jump when you leave that objective, you just go obnoxiously high up in the air. No one's prepared to shoot that high with a dredge. And so you get a couple of like down shot, down right. fire shots, I guess, on top of them that they just don't know what to deal, how to deal with. Enables your reload, gives him the Kraken in that instance, and just lets them walk it in. Yeah, exactly. I mean, he was able to use that little shortcut, like you said, or like you were saying, and also like we saw, be able to jump all the way up, just keep firing in those grenades and have so many different angles to look from. He was opting to shoot down at the ash. I mean, the Dredge was an interesting pick there. I yeah. mean, I, I wish we could see it a lot more, honestly. I think he, he has a place and he can fit in. It's just trying to find that and also convince people to play it. I think it's the other yeah. part of the battle. But couple of maps here and there. I wouldn't mind seeing them come out a little more often. We got a dredge. We got a 3-0. We got Jaguar Falls and Hype Unit already done for this set. Right after this break, we'll be right into the last set of the day. Paladins Minor League is brought to you by Evil Mojo Games, developers of Paladins. 